everyone. Welcome to Gruff Talk, where each week we explore everything to help us feel better, look better, live better, and age better. Today, we're talking about knees. Yep, knees. How to keep them strong, pain-free, injury-free, and as far away from surgery as possible. The not-so-great news is that knee pain is a huge issue for people over 45. But the really great news is that there's a lot you can do to help keep your knees strong and pain-free for many years to come. And that's what our guest today, Dr. Jordan Metzel, and I will talk about. But first, a quick knee story. I'm a runner. I started running at age 50. That's about 15 years ago after going through menopause and looking for a way to get back into shape and lose the weight. If that wasn't motivation enough, the real push came when my youngest daughter, I have two, they're both now in their 20s, said to me that she wants to hold up a sign that says, Go Mom Go, during the New York City Marathon, which goes right past our apartment, about mile 17 and a half. So I did what any good loving parent would do. I bowed to her wishes and went out and bought my first pair of running shoes the very next day and started running. The rest is history. I'm now training for my 15th marathon, which will be once again the New York City Marathon in November. And yes, I did lose all those menopausal pounds and I've kept them off pretty much, more or less. I've had a really good run, no pun intended, and went almost 15 years of running without injury. But then, shortly before turning 65, maybe it's a magical number, I don't know, my left knee started hurting really bad. Diagnosis, osteoarthritis. Oh, I'm not alone. The prevalence of knee arthritis among people in the United States has doubled since World War II, according to a very unusual study of more than 2,500 skeletons, some of them dating back as far as 6,000 years. By the way, one of the researchers involved in that study is Harvard evolutionary biologist, Dr. Daniel Lieberman, who wrote a really great book about the evolution of exercise called Exercise, highly recommended. Anyway, back to knees. Why the increase in arthritis? Well, one really big culprit is inactivity because we spend more time sitting and looking at screens, smartphones to TVs, leg muscles and cartilage are getting weaker, causing joints to break down faster. But don't fret. There's more to this knee story because there are things we can all be doing to stop our knees from deteriorating. So let's get to it. My guest today, who has helped me with my own knee knee issues, is Dr. Jordan Metzel, a super well-known sports medicine doctor at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City, which is the go-to orthopedic specialty hospital. He's regularly voted by his peers to New York Magazine's top doctors list. Dr. Metzel treats athletic-minded people of all ages and abilities, from the world's top athletes to the newly active. His goal is to return athletes and regular people like you and me back to their activity of choice as quickly and safely as possible. In addition to his medical practice, Dr. Metzl is pioneering a new connection between the worlds of fitness and medicine to actively engage patients in their own preventive health through activity, through moving. He developed the really incredible Iron Strength Program, which I do, that has been performed by more than 12 million people globally. And created the Iron String Community Fitness Program. Very often, like on the Intrepid in New York City or in Central Park, you'll see so many people with him as he's leading the groups and uh, thousands each year uh, participate. There will be links to all of this information, including the Iron Strength Program that you can do online at home So in the notes. So make sure you look for those. Dr. Metzl is also the best-selling author of five books, including Dr. Jordan Metzl's Workout Prescription of Running Strong. He recently partnered with the New York Times to create the nine-minute workout, which is also incredible. There'll be a link for that. And the New York Times Guide to Knees. Speaking of knees, he's on the editorial boards of Runner's World, Shape, Prevention Magazines, and has been featured in so many news outlets. And is always on the Today Show and on NPR talking about sports medicine and health and wellness. He also practices what he preaches, a dedicated athlete. He's a 35-time marathoner and 14-time Ironman <laughs> finisher. He lives in New York, and may I add, he is one of the most motivating human beings I've ever met. Welcome to Gruff Talk, Dr. Metzel. 
Hey, thank you. I feel like I don't have to say anything. I just let you talk the whole time. You're amazing. I'll just listen and you keep talking. That's better than anything I can say. Oh, there's a lot for you to say. We have questions. I also posted on Facebook and people put in their questions for you. So stay tuned. Okay. I always ask my guests these two questions. So you're going to have to forgive me up front. Where are you calling in from? Right now, I am out in Southampton, New York, where I don't come out here very often, but my friends uh, have a place out here and I just came out for uh, a weekend. Oh, very nice. I hope the weather is better than it is here where I am. And okay, what did you have for breakfast today? Today, I had two scrambled eggs on a toasted sourdough from Trader Joe's with salt and pepper and an awesome cup of coffee. And uh, my God, it was good. I love Trader Joe's too. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, good. You got your protein in early, which uh, I hear is a really good thing to do. Okay. So first question, research says that almost 25% of Americans suffer from arthritis in the knees. Are knees the biggest issue people come in to see you for in your practice? Well, let's back up a sec. And I love the introductory comments. And I would tell you that as a sports medicine doctor, you know, my job is to keep people active. And that can be everything from elite level athletes to people that want to walk with their grandkids. The commonality of everybody that comes into my office door is they all want to move. And my job is to help get them to move. And when somebody has a knee pain or a knee injury, but more often in this case, we're talking about knee pain. My knee hurts and I don't want to walk. I don't want to go to the walk on this. I don't want to walk in the park. I don't want to play tennis. I don't want to ride my bike as much. When somebody gets knee pain, what ends up happening is they start doing less activity. Mm -hmm. When they start doing less activity, something called their NEAT profile, non-exercise active thermogenesis, or just being active and burning calories from being out and being moving around, that NEAT profile tends to start dropping. And mm -hmm. when that starts dropping, things like diabetes and depression and heart disease and all these things start cropping up because your body isn't moving the way it was designed to move. So yes, it's a knee, but it's a knee as a conduit to their general health. And so knees are probably the most common thing I see in my office. But when somebody comes in, whatever their age is, I kind of see their knee as a bigger piece of someone like you who's like, listen, I want to run marathons and I'm 65 and I have some arthritis in my knee and my knee's sore. How can I make someone like your knee better so you can take the medicine of exercise? And that's where, to me, knees are a conduit to your general health and activity and that becomes so important. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned some of the health issues that can pop up if you don't move your body and if you're not uh, active enough. And also there's bone health. You lose muscle. So really so many terrible things can happen. I know I felt a real change in my body. And I told you that it was really depressing when my knee was hurting so much and then my hip too. But that's a topic for another show. <laughs> oh, we really want to explore some of the treatment options because really the goal of this discussion today is to talk about what can we do to keep our knees strong so that we can, if possible, avoid surgery. So what are some of those yeah. options? So I don't want surgery to be a, a dirty word or a bad word. And so okay. I don't want to give off that idea because there are, you know, function saving operations that can make a huge difference in people's lives everything from acute injuries to kind of things like knee replacements. So I don't want to just, it's too easy to just say all surgery is bad because that's not true. However, for things such as an arthritic knee, surgery should be the end of the road. And so often people think, well, my knee hurts. I'm just going to get a new knee, like getting a new car. My car is broken. I'll get a new car. Right. But the truth of the matter is that knee replacement works great when your car is broken down on the side of the road and then your car can drive 10 miles an hour. But if you have a car that can drive 35 or 40 miles an hour to substitute it out for a car that'll drive 10 miles an hour, many people aren't very happy with that. And so the key for the way I see this is we want to start by thinking about why does somebody have a pain in their knee? So people have pain in their knee for all kinds of problems. It can be because the things around the knee, the muscles around the top of the knee are not strong enough. It can be that the kind of shoes they're wearing aren't right. It can be because their feet are rolling and are pronating. It can be because their stride is off. It can be because they're not walking on the right kind of surface. So those are some factors around me. It can be because they have too much weight on their body. Body mm -hmm. weight is, uh, you know, is another common issue. It can be problems inside the knee. It can be things such as you know they have a torn meniscus cartilage 
or torn articular, the lining cartilage, or worn down articular cartilage around the lining of the joint called arthritis. It can be because there's a problem inside the knee, and there's a whole host of those kind of problems. And so when someone comes in to see me, my first job is to try and figure out why their knee pain is hurting, or is this a referred pain down from somewhere like their hip, shooting pain into their knee, which we also see. And so right. the first job for me is to be a detective. Why does your knee hurt? Once I have figured out why your knee hurts, then my job is to figure out a treatment plan to try and fix the pain in your knee. So is this something we can fix with muscle strengthening, things like quad strengthening? And we have actually for the arthritic knee, we have the best evidence on quad strengthening and muscle strengthening, which is the gold standard for reducing pain in your knees is stronger muscles. So when someone comes in to see me, no matter what I do to make their knee feel better, a big piece of that is also getting their muscle stronger. So to me, the strengthening part of what I do and prescribe is as important, if not more important than many of the things that are done inside the knee. Can I stop you for one minute yeah. right there? Is a, like I did talk about your iron, iron strength program. There will be a link to that. And hopefully there'll be some people in New York listening who can even attend some of your actual sessions live. But is the strength training that's specific to knee health that you were just describing included in that iron strength or are there yeah. specific exercises you think? Do the, do, does someone need a physical therapist to do this? They can if they're quite sore, but I think the overall concept is just stronger muscles mean your body hurts less. So it can be hips, knees, back. So my iron strength program is a kind of a total body strengthening program. So that's mm -hmm. great for back pain and hip pain and knee pain. But if you're just thinking about knees, it's the muscles generally around the hips and knees. So riding a bike is a great way. It doesn't have to be, you know, jump squats. It can be biking. It can be anything to get these muscles, particularly the quads, but all those muscles around the lower body stronger. And what about actual squats? Yeah, love it. Love mm -hmm. a squat. Um, and people can do squats at any age. I have people of all ages doing squats just as a way to build strength up and down those lower, you know, the glutes are incredibly important, the quads, all those things. They're great. And they also, the benefit of squats is they give you a bit of mobility training too. They get those knee joints bending. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you feel about the wall? I think they're called wall squats where you lean up against a wall and then you bend down. Are those also really good for strengthening that area? Those are examples of what are called isometric. So there are mm -hmm. two different, there's several kinds. There's isokinetic, when the muscles get longer and shorter. There's plyometric, which is a rapid elongation and contraction. That's like the little jumps I have you do. And then there's isometric, when the muscle does not get longer or shorter. Something like a plank or a wall squat is an isometric. And they can all build strength differently. I generally like exercises that involve moving the joint because the joint, the knee joint has fluid inside and it's a lubricant. And by getting that joint moving, you know, generally speaking, it just helps, it helps that knee move and feel better. So when possible, I like to emphasize movement when I can. And let's take me, for example, uh, we mentioned that I do have mild arthritis. Thank goodness it's mild. And for me, we treated it with three rounds of hyaluronic acid. And then the final one, the third one was PRP platelet-rich plasma injection, which really, really worked for me. And are you finding that that particular treatment is your current gold standard for mild arthritis? Yeah. Or So here's what I would tell you. So, you know, when somebody comes in, the first thing is, is diagnosing the knee problem and then right. figuring out, you know, what I can do. And then I start kind of a stepwise approach. So I try and think about, you know, depending on how much pain they're in, depending on what their x-ray looks like, depending on their physical exam, can I just have them do strengthening alone? Many people, I'll start just with strengthening alone first and see how they do. But right. Some people have continued pain, and then we start thinking about, can we put stuff inside their knee to make it feel better? And so those things include things like cortisone shots, which are falling out of favor a bit because they give a short-term benefit, but long-term, they don't seem to do too much. And they work primarily on the inflammatory part of arthritis when the knee gets sore. Increasingly, we're enthusiastic about visco supplements or hyaluronic acid, which are basically synthetic versions of joint fluid, which are basically designed to allow the knee to bend and it lubricates the inside of the knee. And then in the last several years, there's been more enthusiasm around combining the visco supplement, the lubricant with PRP, which is when we take the blood from your arm, we spin it, we take your platelets and we mix it with the, with the lubricant which seems to really address the two components of arthritis. The lubricant addresses the mechanical grinding piece, and the PRP is like a long-acting natural anti-inflammatory, which seems to work like a long-acting cortisone. And when those things work together, 
it seems to give a tremendously happy me for the people that we do that with. And so that Mm -hmm. has been a real shift in the last several years towards combining those therapies. And there are a number of researchers around the world doing that with really nice results. But I don't do that for every patient. I do that for the patients where I feel like there's an inflammatory part of their arthritis in addition to the mechanical piece that we address with the lubricant. But again, all of that is only as good. My job's easy. I put the stuff in their knee. Their job is they have to build strength. So part of the reason, Barb, why your knee's feeling better is because we put the stuff in your knee and you noticed a big difference. But the other piece is that you're committed to strengthening because the further you get from 20 years old, the faster you're losing muscle. And if you're not actively strengthening it, you're losing strength. Right. And I did all of those pieces. You know, you did your job and then you told me what I needed to do on my own time. And I have been doing that. And in fact, just a month after we had the final injection and I had continued to do my strength training, I ran the New York City Marathon in November and uh, my knee continues to feel really great. So that was a big success for me. Did your daughter hold the sign up or not? <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Good. <laughs> For the 14th time. <laughs> whatever, man. Yeah, whatever. So what what do you see coming down the pipeline? You know, I had seen an article not long ago, and I know you, you know about this too, of course, in a medical journal about something called TRX100. And the headline really caught my eye because it said, this may reduce or eliminate the need for knee replacement surgery for osteoarthritis. So given my history of knee arthritis, it really caught my attention. What are your thoughts on that? And are there any other promising things coming down the pike? Yeah. I mean, listen, I think that you kind of talked at the open about how prevalent knee arthritis is and how it's debilitating and how people that have it are really up against it. And and we want to keep them moving. And that uh, if they can't, then it affects their general quality of life. So people oftentimes feel quite desperate or really disheartened if they have achy knees and they look for any kind of, they grab at straws. Mm -hmm. And that has created a real industry around, you know, all kinds of things which are not studied very well that are now kind of flooding the market. So all kinds of different kinds of stem cells and different kinds of gimmicks, which may have a lot of validity in the future, but Mm -hmm. where we are right now, the public facing things like these regenerative medicine clinics popping up all over the place of people doing stem cells from fat tissue and bone marrow and et cetera. Those things being done on the scale they're being done versus the science around those things being done are not at the same place yet. So coming down the pike is basically the way it should be done is what is studied, what Mm -hmm. is proven to be effective, what is studied more and proven to be effective, and then what is done to the general public. The problem with you know social media and people promoting all kinds of things and celebrities promoting things is that if oh, yes. then, then there's a whole interest. And that's not just medicine. That's in everything. It's just that in medicine, it carries a different you know weight. So I am generally, I like to stick to things that we have good evidence on. So, yes. you know, because the, the Hippocratic Oath is first do no harm. And that's what we try and do. Yep. Okay. And uh, I did mention before I did post on Facebook that I was going to be chatting with you today. And I said, you know, send, give me your questions and I'll try to get in as many as I can. The vast majority of people ask, what is, it really was the number one question, what are the best exercises to keep knees strong? So you've already covered that. And I was really encouraged by that. Like people wanted to know what can they do, you know, preventatively to help keep their knees strengthened and strong for the long haul. So that, that was actually encouraging. Do you want to add anything to that? I will. Yeah. I mean, I think that our New York times on knees link that you'll put in had a lot of good exercises to start thinking about. But generally when I think about exercises for knees, I think about strength and I think about soft tissue mobilization. So those are two separate things. So strength is basically anything to make your muscles stronger. Biking, squats, lunges are great. Things that build strength are great. And then loosening up soft tissue. So as you age, your soft tissue gets tighter. So Mm -hmm. things like quads and hamstrings and IT bands. And so I'm a big fan of not only mobility, things like some gentle yoga, but also soft tissue mobilization, foam rolling, some of the, the vibrating guns, things to loosen up soft tissue also complement the strengthening. And those things together seem to give us the best muscular support. You can think of it like scaffolding around a building, that the muscles are the scaffolding around your knees. 
or your hips or whatever. And the stronger those muscles are, the better you're going to support those joints. Right. I like to talk about muscles that way too, especially when I'm talking about bones and bone health, which I talk about a lot. So we're talking with Dr. Metzl and after this short break, he'll tell us what we need to do to protect our knees for the long haul. Okay, Dr. Metzl, in addition to exercise, what are some of the most important things we should all be doing to protect our knees, especially as we get older? And you've already covered a few, like you mentioned, foam rolling. And I don't know if everyone's really familiar with that, but that's a pretty easy thing to purchase, a foam roller. Just go on Amazon and get one. And I know you've got YouTube videos showing people how to foam roll. and But I too, only in recent years since I've started to be your patient, have I started to use a foam roller and uh, recently also got one of those great uh, massage guns. (laughs) Is that what they're called? And really very, very effective. But what else can they be doing? Can we talk about shoes for a minute? Do you feel cushioned, less cushioned, or does it depend on the person? It definitely depends on the person. So the story on that is that everybody's built a bit differently. So depending on who you are, and the mechanics of how you move, you may think like softer is better, bigger cushion, better, softer surface, better. But if you feel your knees walking on the road versus you feel your knees after walking on the beach, you may think, my God, my knees hurt worse after I walk on the beach. And you're not alone. Many people who have arthritic knees feel worse after walking on the beach because the instability in the soft surface accentuates mechanical flaws in some people that are, for example, if you're rolling in and you step on a very soft surface, you roll more. So softer shoes, softer surface, it's not a one size fits all. There is Mm -hmm. a lot of variability. So one of the things we like to think about is getting people in the right match of shoes for them. And so part of that is on a physical exam, I'll look at somebody's feet and their knees. I'll see how much they pronate or roll into the middle. I'll get a sense of how they line up between their hips and their knees and the ground. And with all those things, I'll try and figure out, do they need a shoe with some control, meaning they're not going to roll through it. Do they need an orthotic? Do they need Mm -hmm. both? But there's really not a one size fits all for every person. And so I'd really encourage people to talk to their doctor and or to go to something like a a specialty running store where they can look at your particular body. Even though you think I'm not a runner, I'm a walker. But the running stores have great technology. Oftentimes they have a treadmill, you can walk inside, they have people that know, and that's a good place to start. Yeah, that, that's really great advice. That's wonderful advice to have your gait checked and whether you pronate all can have an impact on knees. I know that happened with me. Okay, please, there's a big myth going on out there that has been out there forever and ever and ever. And the myth, I think it's a myth, I think you do too, is that running causes arthritis or running hurts your knees. And I think that's really been debunked. Can you just talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, so that's, you know, That is a popular misconception that I think we're doing a better job of debunking. But the idea is that if you run, you wear down the cartilage in your knees. In fact, the opposite is true. Running is anti inflammatory. Running over time can strengthen all the tissues around your body. And running has all the secondary benefits. So, you know, there's no such thing as, I think, unhealthy running unless. You're an unhealthy runner. If your knees are really killing after you run, you got to go get checked out. Why? Do we have to fix your strength, your stride? What's going on in your knee? Or, you know, you're running improperly. Your form is terrible. We have to fix that. There's a lot of things that we can do. So just running alone may be problematic depending on how you're doing it. So we got to figure out, are you doing it the right way? And then most importantly, I find in my office, people are the best athletes when they're doing, they do, when they're doing what they want to do. So if you're somebody that loves to row, if you like to ballroom dance, ballroom dance, if you like to walk, walk, if you like to run, run, I think trying to make yourself into something you don't like doing because it's quote unquote good for you, that can be tough too. That is such great advice. Really great because people then won't do it. They just won't do it. They won't do anything then. That's correct. This was an incredibly helpful conversation about knees, and there's so much more I want to ask you about, but I don't want to say goodbye. I want to say to be continued. But before I let you go, please share the three most important things you want our listeners to take away from our chat today. Well, sure. First of all, I want people to know that if your knees hurt, that is not just the way it is. There's a lot we do to try and figure out why people's knees hurt and what we can do 
to figure out why they hurt and to make them feel better. So just because your knees hurt, don't give up, investigate. And so make sure you talk to somebody. And if you don't like the first opinion, talk to somebody else. But you want to try and figure out, you know, why your knees hurt, because just having achy knees, you know, doesn't have to be the way for many, many people. Number two is I want to emphasize the importance of general mobility, that moving every day is one of the most effective forms of preventive health we have. And that I don't want your knees or your achy hips or whatever to limit your movement. If that's happening, you definitely want to think about getting some help because when you start diminishing your activity because things hurt, that's when we see all kinds of other medical problems. Mm -hmm. And number three, I want to reemphasize the importance of strength around knees. The stronger the muscles are around your knees, the better you will feel. So don't be afraid to think about strengthening. I have a lady in her mid 80s that teaches kettlebell classes in New York. Like, that's what you should be thinking about. Yeah, that's what I want to be doing when I'm 80. Okay. I'm sure you will. <laughs> well, I hope to still be running marathons when I'm 80. That's my goal. By Thank the way, you. I want to finish yeah. it with, I saw a yeah. guy in my office, 78 years old last week, and he's run the New York City Marathon 48 years out of the, in a row, 40 years in a row. And I said, that's amazing. He started doing it, you know, in his 30s and it's amazing. He's a lifelong New Yorker. Now he lives part of the year in Florida, but he comes up every year for 48 years. And I said, what keeps you going? And he said, I love it. But there's a guy who's 80 that keeps beating me and I want to beat that <laughs> SOB. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's a great motivator. So that's something else too. We always need a motivation, right? Even if it's you a bet. new motivation, that's a good one. You bet. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for tuning in everyone and learning more about our guest, Dr. Jordan Metzl. Check out all the links to learn more about Dr. Metzl, his books, and specifically his Iron Strength program, and definitely that special that he did for the New York Times on knees. It is incredible. If you love this episode, please share it with your friends and family so they can protect their knees too. And if you don't want to miss an episode of Gruff Talk where we will be talking about money, sex, style, health, nutrition, grief, and so much more in upcoming episodes, here's what you need to do. Subscribe to Gruff Talk wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube. So easy, just click on the little subscribe button. Until next time, remember this. We can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. Bye for now. Age Better Podcast is a proud member of the Sound Advice Network. Sound Advice, women's voices amplified.